Hi, I'm Steve from the Stone Crafting Workshop. I went shopping yesterday in Aldi's for cheese <laughs> and I came out with this. It's the Ferrex Mini Bench Grinder. I've read some write-ups uh, on the internet and they were a bit mixed but um, I'm quite interested in it. It looks like just the tool for me so uh, let's unbox this and have a look at it and see what we think. Ferrex mini bench grinder. Let's have a look. Book of words, instructions, flexible shaft and the end tool. There's a set of ten burrs they're carbide burrs. There's two spare grind wheels. One of them is carburundum and the other is a soft felt polishing wheel. There's a bag of bits. There are two spark shields which have to be fitted and then there's the machine itself it's quite heavy it doesn't feel flimsy let's have a look at it so this has got the two wheels already fitted it's got um, a carburetor wheel on this side and a felt wheel on that side it's got an on off switch at the front and a speed dial it's a 230 volt machine and it's got a maximum revs of 9,900 9, revs per minute and that's pretty quick. Oh there's the there's the fitting on the side here for the shaft. So what I'll do now I'll assemble it and then we'll have a good look at it. So that's it assembled it was quite easy it took about 10 minutes a bit of fiddling uh, I had a bit of fiddling with the burrs and the, the grinding tool on the end and I'll explain that in a minute. First of all, let's take that off while we look at the actual machine itself. So. The machine itself is 120 watt which doesn't sound that powerful but um, as soon as you turn it on it starts up slowly because I've got the, the dial, the speed dial set down to minimum. And then you turn it up. That's it, 9,900 revs. That sounds incredibly quick to me. Impressively quick. The instructions putting it together are very simple. It's just a few screws really. When you fit these uh, tool holders, conventional wisdom is that you have them as close to the wheels as possible so that you can't catch your fingers and get them dragged down. As I say, this wheel is carborundum. Sadly, in the instructions and the book of words it doesn't tell you the grit how coarse it is and I did say this was felt it's actually foam rather than felt but apart from that it's all pretty obvious the spark guards work well let's see the grinders in action shall we let's try and grind something what shall we grind let's type a great big chisel. I don't think for a second this is going to work, but let's give it a go.
as you could hear, doing something that big, it simply keeps slowing the machine down, but it actually worked okay. <laughs> it's not made for that, it's made to do small stuff. What have I got that's small? How about putting an edge on a bradle? Well, that works really well. Nothing wrong with that. Let's try sharpening a knife. Um, it certainly worked on it. It's it's actually sharp there, but it is coarse. I would say. It's probably an 80 grit, something like that. The polisher, I'm not sure how you'd use that. Again, the instructions are very light on how you actually use the machine. I assume you'd use this for polishing metal, putting um, some sort of polishing stick on it to polish up your metal. But it does work and it works really well. And although it slows down, it is only a 120 watt motor. And um, I think it's quite impressive, personally. Let's have a look at the shaft now. This is the bit that interests me. The metal end just fits in there. And then you turn the nut onto it. The nut is a left-hand thread, so it's sort of counterintuitive to what you would normally use. It's a plastic nut, so I think you can hand tighten it. I don't think you need to use a spanner myself. Although the instructions say use a spanner. The tool at the end has to be locked using this spindle lock pin. You simply turn the shaft until there's a hole that lines up and you can just put that in and get it out of the way. Just hold it like that. Take that off. If you unscrew that, inside is a brass collet. And it's the collet that holds the shaft on the burr. Now the one that's fitted in this one fits the burrs that were supplied with the machine, these carbide burrs. It fits that. I'm not going to tighten it up with a spanner at the moment. Let's take that out for a second. Now here is a diamond burr that I use in my rotary grinder. It has a standard 3.2mm or 1 8 shaft and it won't fit. And the reason is that the collets supplied with the machine, it's supplied with three collets. One, two, three. Two of them are two and a half mil collets that fit these carbide burrs and only one of them is the one eighth collet that fits the diamond burrs that I normally use. It's common to replace these these collets they do eventually wear out they can get damaged and you can buy replacements and I've got lots of replacement spares I bought packet of spares on eBay for my Parkside grinder but unfortunately they don't fit this one <laughs> it's non-standard these collets will fit Dremels and they'll fit the Parkside rotary grinder but they won't fit this one so at some stage we have to hope that Aldi's start selling packets of spare collets in the right size in 3.2 but for now let's put the 2.5 collet back in the machine put one of these grinders in the end tighten it up with a spanner and then try it out let's try it on this bit of slate feels nice and smooth Full speed first. Okay, 
to speed a little bit, do some little fine work. Okay. I think that's really good. I'm really impressed with that. And in spite of the kerfuffle with the collets, the collet sizes, I quite like it. Let's try it with one of my diamond burrs. So we've got to take this collet out. How irritating! Why wouldn't they supply you with a set of burrs with a 3.2 shaft and three 3.2 collets? What's the matter with them? Heaven's sakes. And I'm sure somebody on eBay will be producing collets as spares. I couldn't slow it down and I couldn't stop it by pressing as hard as I could. So I'm really pleased with that. The only bit of this I'm not pleased with is the collets that are supplied. As I said at the beginning of the video, um, a lot of the reviews on the internet are a bit mixed. They're to do with the machine being underpowered. They're to do with... Uh, there was one actually saying that he couldn't get the um, tools to tighten up in the end of the grinding machine. I suspect he had the 3.2 collet in there and was trying to fit these in it. I think most of the bad reviews are to do with over expectation of what this machine will do. It's only 120 watt and it's never going to sharpen or grind chisels or you know lawnmower blades or something ridiculous like that. It's a hobby tool. It's for people who do jewellery and model making and engraving. And if you bear that in mind, and also bear in mind the fact that this only cost me £17.50, I think this is absolutely fantastic value for money. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have, please uh, give me a thumbs up. I do like those. And if you want to see more reviews on stone crafting tools and machines and stone crafting, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.